Oh, Spirit, she had us worried, didn't she? Yeah, she was She was uh, a suffering little girl for a little while. It wasn't, uh, wasn't quite fair to her. No. So we're coming to you from the future. Um, when this was going on with Spirit, our 100% focus was on Spirit. She was a herding unit, and we had no business trying to film that. Oh, we didn't have a chance to. We didn't no. have time to film it because she needed 100% of our time. Um, literally, she needed us to be with her the whole time. So we took her in on Friday to take care of her ear issue mm -hmm. as well as an exploratory to see if we needed to do additional surgery with her behind. Mm -hmm. um, we originally thought she was going to have it both done at right. the same time, but this first surgery was really, they just kind of made her Happy well, with yeah, happy they, drugs, right? It wasn't a, it wasn't a full under under anesthesia. Anesthesi yeah, it was just local kind of stuff. Um, but you want to explain what they did so, that Friday? Yeah, that Friday, the first procedure she had, and uh, and what kind of prompted all this was um, she has had ear infections in the past quite a bit, and we had found, I guess we had a uh, an appointment the week before. And determined that she had polyps in her ear, and uh, that was leading to her infections and such. So this, this procedure was to attempt to remove the polyps and to clean out the ear. Well, it just so happens that the polyps were so far down in the ear canal. The dog's ear canal is very long and deep, and with the tools that the uh, doctor has, it was difficult to get down in there to remove them totally. He said he got about 90% of them, which is good. It opens up the ear canal quite a bit, but there still can be a problem with um, further infections from, from here on out. And, and that's something we're going to have to continually monitor and, and keep her ear clean. and uh, For the rest of her life. Yeah, monitor it and wash it he just, once a week. He physically doesn't have the tools to get all the way down there. Right. They would have to surgically, sorry, using Gary as oh, an example, Don't cut me. drill into her head to get down in there and then remove. And... At her age, um, you know, has she experienced ear loss or is hearing it, loss? Did I say ear you said loss? Ear loss. Hearing loss. Yeah. Um, a little bit. I think she has. I mean, There's still a lot of on ignore. Stubborn, stubborn husky. <laughs> That's typical of Siberians. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, she's doing better. Yeah. We're going to have to continually maintain and, clean. And, and just as, as we get older, we all we, we require more maintenance. So yep. that's just what it is. We just have to weekly clean her ears out. Not a big deal. Easy to do. Yep. But, and with that, while she was there, the doctor also kind of inspected her rear end and, and kind of determined what needs to be done there um, for next procedure. And he felt it was a viable surgery that he could uh, help in that department yep. without with actually going in and kind of seeing where things were at, he didn't think it would mess with her having to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. which our last vet experience at a different uh, facility told us something completely right. different. So Very this, uh, that's why we never had surgery prior, because they told us most likely mm -hmm. she would have incontinence issues, and um, it just really worried us. Yeah. This doctor really had us kind of at ease. Well, and he felt very everything. confident. He, he, he was, I, I felt that we could trust him after dealing with him for a couple of time visits. Yeah. And I felt he had confidence that it, it was an easy surgery. And of course, every vet's going to push a dental. So yeah. we figured Spirit's 13, almost 13 years old. She's never had a dental. Might as well get in there, just make sure everything looked good. So she's going out. They're going to so, put her all the way out. They scheduled her for a second procedure where the she'd go under anesthesia mm -hmm. uh, just four days later, the following Tuesday. Yep. So we're pretty shocked. We originally called on Monday, got in for the first visit with the doctor on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. By Friday, she had her first procedure, and then going back in the following Tuesday for the big... For the big procedures. The big surgery. Yeah. So, that's four appointments in... in two weeks. In no, well, less than a week. week one week. week and a half. Yeah. Tuesday to Tuesday. Yeah. So, that was, that was pretty awesome. I mean, that was great. 
I mean, I'll be honest, even in the past with yeah. the same vet, we've, we've had, had to wait difficult. weeks just to be mm -hmm. seen for the initial yeah. appointment. So and I, I don't know if that's just luck of the luck of the draw, timing, or if I, I really don't think it was the severity of the issues. I think they might have been slow. Maybe they are slow. I don't know, Maybe but just, I'm appreciative of it. Yeah. Spirit didn't have to wait too long. Yeah. Um, we put her through a lot, though, in that one week. So we get to Tuesday, the big surgery day, and I head in there, I don't know, 7 a.m. for drop-off time. And uh, they tell me, okay, great. Um, you should be hearing us from, hearing, uh, from us around noon or so. And the doctor, if there's any problems, will keep in touch with you. It wasn't until about four o'clock, and I look at Gary. I'm like, "Why um, haven't what? we heard Where, from them?" Where's our dog? And I think I had sent them a message, a text message, and then I never, re never got a response on the text. Previously, the doctor had been pretty good about responding to messages. This time he, was he didn't. Busy. He was busy because Spirit didn't get on the table till afternoon, and then uh, we didn't get the call to pick her up until around five p.m. Yeah. And uh, we get there, and and. I mean, she can barely, she can't walk. She couldn't walk. And she is whining and screaming and just out of it. I mean, I honestly think she probably could have stayed there sedated overnight and been better off than us picking her up that day. I agree. Um, but she just didn't, she looked like she'd just come off the surgery table. And, and, you know, I just went through that too. And I know if I don't want to go home right after <laughs> surgery, I'd give me a little bit to rest. Um, <sighs> so... In, in discharge, um, we discussed medications, and there's an antibiotic that was given to her, and then they prescribed um, gabapentin. gabapentin for her, for her pain management. Well, gabapentin isn't really a pain medication. It's more of a, I don't want to call it a psychotropic, but it's a... It's it's anti anxiety, anti -anxiety, anxiety yeah. and there's a reason why they gave her this. It's because she was on a ster steroid originally from the original appointment to help with the the ear infection. It was a steroid anti-inflammatory medication, and I guess the, there's a conflict with a with an anti-inflammatory and the pain medications they wanted to use. They she needed to be off the steroid for so Certain many days. Yeah. So, I mean, in 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 the long run, I guess that was. Maybe the right choice. I don't know. I'm still not convinced of that, though. So we get her home. And she was like a zombie. And yeah. she was crying and soiling herself, even as she would walk or scoot or lay. I mm -hmm. mean, we went to move her, and she was laying in a puddle of pee. Yeah. And so then, thank goodness, we had a box of potty pads. So right. we got those out, got her into her bed, and... No one slept that night. She was whining and moaning and, and uncomfortable, and she couldn't move. She couldn't walk. She couldn't get herself up to walk. There was a couple times I asked Gary, is she breathing? And that, that was seriously the, consider, the case, too, because she was breathing so shallowly. Shallow. Make sure she's still breathing. I'm still watching her. I guess would be a word. Gary, Not very deep. Gary was down with his hand on yeah. her, just making sure She's he could still there. feel her breathing. But she was in a different state and you could see of it consciousness. In her eyes. I mean, she never really came back to life after surgery. She never you, you could you couldn't the light wasn't on in the eyes. The eyes were just there, but she just wasn't now, her spirit wasn't there. No <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. Yes. Now keep in mind the procedures, so she had the back end taken care of. They removed the mass on her, her armpit, armpit and um, full dental. They did a full dental with a molar, a molar extraction. extraction. So she was hurting from tip to tail. Yeah, she had a lot going on. So I mean, yeah, I don't blame her for not feeling good. I mean, I wouldn't feel good either. But she still just wasn't there. And the next morning, waking up and and did know, we wake up? I think we were well, up all just night. Getting up, and, yeah. When the sun came up, I guess we decided it was time to get up. I basically had to carry her outside to try to get her to go outside and go pee, and and it was another situation where she's kind of just dripping, dripping across the the floor because she couldn't hold it. She could barely walk. Um, it, it it was scary. I We've think never we, seen we her like this. We dealt with that for a couple of days. Two well, days. Uh, when was it? It was Wednesday night. So we'd gone a full twenty four hours, yeah. and we just. We weren't seeing improvement. No. And well, her, oh, that's not her, her walking. 
Well, she finally did get some strength to walk. But she and had her, a weird limp. Her hips were really loose, and she was her legs were doing weird things, and she couldn't walk a straight line. She was just woozy, like she was. She was flying. She was just a space cadet. She was out there. Still turning in on. Did you see that? Gary was texting with the vet, and the vet's like, Well, I won't be back into the office until Friday, so do you want an appointment on Friday? And we're like, Yes. yes. So, but we were still very concerned. This is Wednesday night, mm -hmm. and I had posted on social media what was going on with her. And my cousin, who lives in Alabama, she's actually a veterinary anesthesiologist. And she reached out, and she's like, okay, what kind of meds is she on? Mm -hmm. And I told her, and she's like, well, she needs to be on something else other than gabapentin. Because gabapentin is putting her into a different universe right. where she's not operating correct. It, it, not only, it, 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 it put your mind in a different spot so she doesn't think about the pain. The pain's still there, but she doesn't think about the pain. So I went through, because Spirit's been through several surgeries, <laughs> I went through all of her old pill bottles, and I found some trazodone, which my cousin had suggested if we had that, we could give her that because of the steroid that she was previously on. Mm -hmm. So that night we gave her her first dose, Took her off the gabapentin, put her on the trazodone, and by the next morning she was a completely a different dog. A world of difference. Her eyes were bright again. Uh, she was actually walking pretty well. Uh, she was able to hold her urine and, and, and feces in and, and take care of that outside as normal. Um, it was just, it was amazing. Within hours she had, was, was changed that much. And I don't, I, I, I truly think it was getting her off the gabapentin. Uh, that did that and 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 you know thank you Darcy for those suggestions we really do we really Absolutely. do appreciate that a lot it saved us a lot of heartache so we canceled our our emergency visit <laughs> with the doctor for that Friday because mm -hmm. she had an appointment with the doctor for her one week follow-up the following Tuesday right. so we're like I think we're finally on the right path yep. she's on the right meds she's acting herself again kind of Yep, the life is coming back, the spirit. She, Yes, yeah, she was her, getting to be her normal yep. self. Yep, And so we went through the weekend, and all was good. Mm -hmm. We just tried to keep her comfortable. And then Tuesday, she had her follow-up follow -up appointment. Follow-up appointment Tuesday morning. I go, I take her in, and uh, the doctor's not there. And on the schedule, I mean, we're on the schedule for a, a procedure follow-up. But the surgeon, the doctor is not there, and there's another uh, veterinary assistant that's there, and and she looks at Spirit and says, "Well, I I I'm not really qualified to and to look at this, and, and I, I can look at the incisions and say that they're good, but I I, I can't do a full follow up on this procedure." It's like, "Well, I this was scheduled." Why, for are, we Why are we here? So anyway, you know, I'm, there's a little miscommunication there somehow. I don't know what happened. So we worked with the office staff and we found that the doctor is going to be back in on what Thursday? Friday. Friday. So we're again scheduled for the follow up with the doctor on Friday, and uh, we go to that, and uh, he does his little, little you know overall look and, and and talk to him and all that, and he's very satisfied with everything that's going on. And we told him about the drug yep. change we did yep. on the recommendation from a veterinary anesthesiologist. And he, he was actually very happy that we did that, that we noticed that Spirit was was maybe medicated incorrectly uh, and it wasn't benefiting her. And he said, yeah, that's great that you reached out to alternative, alternative sources to find a better solution. So he was very proud that we did that, very happy that we did that. I think Spirit um, was too. And we all were. We all were. So that was a, a great choice for us, and the doctor agreed later on. I was going to say, I know a lot of people have, uh, especially when this was going on, they were asking, how is the vet care in Alaska? Oh. And it's really hit or miss. Mm -hmm. 
Um, overall, I just, what I experienced, uh, I would rate the vet care from this visit at a B. Mm, um, I, really? Yeah. I, I think I'd give them a little bit more respect than that just because I had, I had quite a bit of communication with them through, through text and emails more than you saw. Um, I think I'd give them an A, probably an A minus. Um, just because they were, they were texting me quite a bit about spirit progress. And then that's how we determined to have an emergency follow up on that Friday that we had eventually canceled is through text message and all that. So I would give them an A minus on that. And the only reason why a minus is because we had that little hiccup with her follow up that was supposed to be a surgeon and not a. Well, and whatever. I think that's where my hiccup is and why I'll only give them a B is because that took time out of yeah. our busy schedules yeah. as well yeah. to go and get nothing accomplished. Yeah. But I will say um, this vet clinic. Now, we've been there in the past where we've had to wait one, two weeks mm -hmm. to be seen with an emergent problem. And this time we, we got it all done within two weeks total Pretty from much. first visit to last post-op mm -hmm. visit. That is excellent, I it, feel. It is really good. Um, that care in Alaska, I feel, is really hit or miss. Mm -hmm. We've had some great visits. We've had some really bad ones. And it's not just the visits. It can be the technicians within the vet, vet clinic itself. It can be uh, different, different doctors within each clinic are different. We've had... Spirit's seen several different doctors at the Big Lake Clinic. There's one I don't care for, but there's a couple that are pretty decent. Yeah. Um, I would also say, you know, there's certain clinics that through our experiences, our dogs will never go back Correct. to. I will drive all the way to Anchorage for a pet emergency if need be versus mm -hmm. here in town. Right. And that's just our own personal preference. Price-wise, I'd say in all... For this problem, the two procedures, uh, medications, was around $3,200 to $3,500. Mm -hmm. Not that bad. I feel that, I agree. I feel for what she had done, that wasn't horrible. I know we've had less done in the lower 48 and have paid more. Yep. Um, so I think definitely we will return to this vet. Mm -hmm. Um Couple of vets we've gone to, and it's a one and done. It's just like, no, I, I don't like the feel. You don't get the good feel. I don't like, uh, you know, communication yeah. is key. Yeah. Spirit's first vet here was wonderful. She was a mobile vet and came to us, and then she had a mask removed on her face by her. She did great, but whenever Spirit had something else going on, th that vet never returned our calls. And that was frustrating yeah. to me. Yep. Um, so I've heard stories where people have to take their pets to lower 48 for veterinary care. I feel that's not as necessary. Maybe in some extreme specialty situations, that's a possibility. But with the amount of, of dogs and working dogs in the area... There's plenty of vets I think and plenty of qualified exactly. vets around here. There are some great vets. There are. And there's some pretty crappy ones, too. Yeah. But um, overall experience, uh, Spirit has definitely uh, bounced back. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And, and you know, yeah, we said she's almost 13 years old, and we just spent $3,500 on her dog. It comes down to quality of life. You know, I want her to live her end years the best she can. And uh, and I know that I know that it's it's getting short, but um, it's she's, it's quality of life uh, that, that that needs to be provided to her. She's part of our family. She's our family. She's I our mean, fur baby. You would you do that if it was your yeah. human child? So, yep. and if you can't tell, Spirit is Gary's dog, yeah. <laughs> and Sophie is my dog, uh, even though they're both our, our dogs. dogs mm -hmm. uh, Spirit has imprinted on Gary. Sophie has definitely imprinted on me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we love our fur babies. Yep. And the love we felt from all of you through the process, yes. especially I know a lot on YouTube are just learning of this experience, but over on our social medias, especially Facebook, uh, our followers got to follow in real time, real time. what mm -hmm. was going on and a lot of concern. 
And we're just so happy that um, Spirit recovered. She still, even today, she's still having ear yep. issues. It's just going to be a new part of it's just her part life of her routine. Monthly, her weekly routine now, and um, I, I'm a little bit behind on that right now. <laughs> Somebody doesn't have the ability to get down on the floor. Well, I could probably. Anyway. <laughs> That's another video. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we just wanted to let you know what was going on with Spirit. And that is a recap. Yeah. So. All right. Now we're going to get back into the video from a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we'll take you there now. Welcome to the 2024 Neighborhood Ice Fishing Derby. Hey. We, <laughs> we are over at our uh, neighbor's place uh, on their lake and the whole neighborhood is out fishing today. The tournament is four hours long and whoever pulls up the biggest fish wins the pot. Of course. So it's five dollars per person to participate so you know, we're not here to make big money, and honestly... We're not here to do much of anything, except... <laughs> have fun. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Three-year-old riding a snow machine. That's just that's awesome. That's so cool. Love it. Oh, Sarah's just bit it. Oh, did he? <laughs> We're having a little unusual weather today, too. I hear some hard stuff falling on top of the tent above us. I don't know if it's hard or... It's, it's not snow. I'm not used to seeing this stuff happen when it's not snow. But we came prepared. We brought our pop-up. Pop and did you even bring our, our fire pit? I got the fire pit, too, just in <laughs> case we need the fire pit. You know? Why it, not? It's pretty comfortable, though. I think, what, it was near... 30 degrees when we, left the house. when we left the house. 27. So if it's raining, I mean that tells you something. It's it's above freezing. But um, we're pretty we're pretty ducked out. Sophie is with us today. Spirits at home. Um, just Chilling. not ready yet. Because um, we did snow machine over here. But Sophie came for the ride and she's all bundled up in her booties and her coat. And yeah. Poles are in the water, and now we wait. So we're uh, we're targeting um, rainbow trout here in this lake. So a little rainbow trout, currently the biggest size. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi, Lisa. It's, uh, <laughs> currently the largest one is 16 and a half inches, and it's not mine. Yeah, and Lisa's one of our judges. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> and she's not here to judge anything we got because we don't got anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, not at all. All you've got is fun. We just caught a little one. Good. Oh, nice. Yes. Yes. So little people one. are catching fish. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Calvi's got a good one. Calvi's got one that I'm not sure if it's a little bigger than Randy's or not. Yeah. Ah. I have to really uh, stretch that tail somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> As it gets cold, I mean, they're shrinkage, so. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Is that a thing? I think so. <laughs> I wouldn't know. So here's my setup. Just a little pole. I've got a yeah. travel hook with some, uh, with some of these on it, the legs. Again, we don't know what we're doing. We're just here to have fun. Yeah, we do have some guys who do know what they're doing and take ice fishing seriously. <laughs> Not ice, and me. <laughs> uh...
now. Nice and warm in here. Got four lines down to per person. Fire pit going. This isn't an ice hut, but this is close enough. Even put up a, a windshield on one side. We don't have all that fancy fishing equipment nope. because this isn't something we really do on a regular basis. In fact, I think I can count on one hand how many times we've gone ice fishing. Yeah, I can't do it yet. It's not very many. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we're having fun. Yep. And our friend Mike just came out and said, you guys have got the setup. So Yeah, we're doing pretty good. I mean, we've got fire, we've got shelter, we've got food and snacks, mm -hmm. and maybe on the end of the line. Well, that'd be nice. Yeah. But I don't know. We're probably not using the right lures. We're probably not using the right bait. We're probably not using the right whatever the heck that we don't know. Do not look to us we're for not ice trained. fishing nope. advice. No. We can we can kill some fish off our boat pretty pretty mm -hmm. easily. Uh, this is for pure fun and enjoyment. This right now is for the party later this evening. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys are having a great day. You sure are. Well, it's two o'clock, and so far we have fed the fish. They have not fed us, but both Gary and I had some good nibbles. We have one more hour to try to win this thing. Big money. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you are notified whenever we post again. And lastly, we hope that you will join us here next time on Living Free Alaska.